for any? Hey there, everyone. Uh, this is Raji, uh, and you're here for another Build It in Figma. Now, this one's a little bit different. We're also doing a Zoom webinar. And if you're on Twitch or YouTube right now and you're looking to ask some questions, we're also streaming this on another platform. So we'd love it if you join us over there in the Zoom webinar. That would be awesome. And then you can go ahead and raise your hand and uh, ask some Q&A there. And we can go ahead and handle those questions there. Uh, I'll try to do my best at replying in the chat if I can, but I'll try to do even better at trying to teach you or show you as I'm building stuff in Figma. It's good to have everyone in. Uh, hey, Meher from San Francisco. Uh, Chaotic Goodfellow, good to see you. Yorby, good to see people coming in. Andy, good to see Tampa representing all the way over there. Good to see you. I will be getting you that Zoom link right now. Just letting you know that we're just starting this setup. So my windows are a chaotic mess. Uh, so many different windows. So let me just grab you that link and I will be right there with you. All right. There's that link for you. Feel free to share that as other people start asking questions. Would love to see you jump on in there. Uh, like I said, this is an experimental try to see if this platform works a little bit better for us. Uh, but I'd love to jump into the real meat and potatoes of this whole thing. It feels like it's been so long since we've designed together. It's been like three weeks, I think. Three, two weeks since I've... What is time? What is time anymore? 
Uh, I think it's been like three weeks. So if y'all could just chime in really quick and let me know if everything's sounding good. I really tried to figure out today, like how, how does the sound sound? Like try to get that sound at a nice soothing level like I would when I'm designing, but at the same time, not blasting over me so you can't hear anything. Rakesh, India, middle of the night. Great to have you. That's amazing. Way to come on in. Uh, thanks for coming on in, everyone. It's good to see you. We've got Patrick Torres in, Summer Zhang, thank you. Kushal, Jess, thanks for coming in. Y'all are great. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and jump right in. We've got some time. We've got about an hour here that we're gonna stream. What amount of design work can possibly even be done in an hour? Uh, I guess we'll find out. Uh, so let's resume the state of this book app that we were working on. Now, we come into this, uh, the anatomy of this file, we can see that we've set up a few components. We've got a bunch of components here for like a feed, a book, for books you're reading, search, a star, maybe for your favorites. Uh, we've also got a header component here. We've also got a nav bar component. Uh, previous streams, you can check those out on uh, YouTube's, uh, Figma's YouTube, uh, and you'll be able to go see how we got all this stuff built. Uh, we did a lot of things, so we'll do a quick overview. We started out this whole project by like saying, what would this app be? And so we started having all kinds of crowdsourced ideas, which was pretty cool. And we got to see like, here's our feature ideas. And then here's all the ordered features. Uh, we wanted to add my book. We wanted to do all these things. Uh, also, we had some inspiration. We just threw down some different ideas. Hey, these icons were kind of cool. Um, these bits of UI that had book books in them, these weren't necessarily inspiration for aesthetic, but they were inspiration for just like, this is how book apps are laid out. Uh, here, hold on just one second. All right, making sure everything's good. We're all good. Uh, we also had some other inspiration for like, oh, here's some navigation, different things like that. Won't go too much into that. Then we also had like a mood board. Uh, it was a pretty uh, simple mood board because it was literally something we built on stream. And so we're doing this in like, three one hour segments. Uh, but we really liked this kind of black and white aesthetic here. Like it felt very booky and, and old world, but yet kind of modern too. So we liked that. Uh, we also came in and we delved into a little bit of skeuomorphism with a semi-realistic looking book here. And you can see uh, that we actually set up all kinds of little gradients over here to make this book look like it had shape and like it had a uh, dimension and a little bit of lighting and then we set up this book component with a book image so that we could stack a bunch of images in here and just swap them out really quick. So it's just a book component you can see here. Uh, and I think the actual master component is somewhere on this artboard. I'm not sure where it's at. But we also listed a bunch of books that you designers get all, uh, all hot and heavy over. So we got all these things that everyone shared, like the elements of typographic style the design of everyday things. I have this book. I have not read it. I know. It's a crime. Uh, we also did this really cool thing at the beginning of the stream where we took uh, all of these uh, ideas that we were working with and we brought out my iPad, all of us together, uh, holding hands, of course, brought out my iPad and we uh, used the pencil tool to throw down some ideas. Uh, okay, now on to the app. All right, we were talking about this before. Uh, okay, I see I've moved the master component into this here. Now, one thing to know about this component, and I think it's a really good tip for you all, uh, if you just do a resize on these things, you may wonder like, well, why this doesn't look right? It didn't scale this. And that's like the, uh, the shadows and the bevels and the insets. And the reason that it didn't scale those is because we're using something in Figma called the move mode. Uh, and move mode actually maintains all of the constraints within something. So you can see here that I have the constraints set to be on the left, top, and bottom. And so it stays in that left, top, and bottom. Hey, Lola from Nigeria. Great. I love to see that. That's great. Um, welcome. So now what we've got going on here is that uh, if you do this, you can see that the uh, border radii are just a little too just too like kiddish now and all of these constraints are wrong. Now, the cool tip here, pretty easy thing, and this is how we accomplished uh, some of the smaller book components, 
is that we just went into scale mode. So if you just go here to scale or press the letter K, you'll see that your cursor looks a little bit different here. It's actually got like these two arrows. Now if we scale here, you can see that everything looks perfect. Everything's in the right place. It scales everything. That means it scales all attributes. The left constraints that we had set up, the left, right, top, and bottom, it'll scale those down, as well as it'll scale those border radius, or radii as I like to call them. All right, so that's what we've done here in this mock-up is that I use that scale mode to get them down. Now, scale mode right now in Figma is a little bit strange, and I think a lot of people struggle a bit with like, well, how do I get it exactly? And, and, and then they think like, okay, say I want it to be 300 wide, what they might do is come over here, lock constraints and go 300. Um, you'll notice that if we did that, and let's do it even more, that we're back in that strange move mode kind of a constraint thing. So uh, this is something that I'm hoping that Figma can do a little bit of improvement on. But for right now, when you scale, you have to use this kind of scale. It's a more analog scale method. So my little hack and trick is that I come over here and say I want it to be 300 wide. I'll just create a little frame that's 300 and I'll allow this auto snapping to get me there. And then I'll just scale to that and then we'll see an auto snap there at 300. Um, and once I get that, then I just ditch this frame. I know, shouldn't need to be done, but hey, y'all are, uh, you're learning with me. You're learning with me. Alex Aronson, probably butchered your last name. Uh, I was gonna share this as well, but I didn't wanna go through the steps so we can get into everything here. There's also a plugin called the Scale Plugin. And if this is something of interest, let's go check that out. Let's go to the Scale Plugin. This will help you with that, with typing in those numeric values. Um, it's probably just called scale and not scale plugin. Okay, let's do this one here. There's one with 3K installs. This is kind of how I judge it. And then there's one here as well, uh, scale with 1K installs. So let's go back to our file. Let's give this a try. Now in this mock-up here, let's see if we can replicate the same thing. This was 96 pixels wide here for this one. Let's see how the scale flexes. So the first one's Figma's native way of working with this stuff. So width is 96. Uh, let's let's get in. Oh, that is not pretty. That is not pretty at all. All right. And now on this one, let's try that scale plugin. I love using the command slash and then typing in what I want because then I don't have to deal with my mouse. Uh, so we've got here scale width height. We wanted 96. And we're going to resize. Aha! Great work. That's awesome. Uh, this works exactly how we would hope. This one does not. All right. All right, so let's get back into where we were at. All right, so the first thing we need to do is we're starting to talk about prototyping today, which means we've got a few things on the screen and we've got to figure up some things, but we need to start rigging these things up so that they're interactable, so that when we go to showcase them or showcase them to our clients, that they can actually interact with them a lot like a... Uh, I don't, like a like an iPhone or something like that. Now, one thing that uh, our designer advocate Tom Lowry taught me the other day, which I love, uh, is this. Now, you may notice that I actually scaled this frame, and it didn't mess this up. And the reason that is is because in the frame I put this navigation element, and I've set it to be left and right constrained and to always stay on the bottom. Now, normally it doesn't have this fixed position when scrolling, so. And normally what I would have here is something like this, where it's just the frame height. Let's talk about a few things right now. The first thing I wanna talk about is just what this is like when I hit play. Let's hit play. All right, so let's scroll a little bit. Well, first of all, you see that there is no scrolling. I can't scroll, and this is kind of my default state. Now Figma's always live and in sync, you don't have to build this presentation here. When you hit play and go into presentation mode. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into this prototype and I'm gonna say to this frame that I want vertical scrolling. Oop, I've got a little bit of a error on this one. We'll see what's wrong with it. Ah, yes, this is a great little, little warning. Uh, you may not know that this is actually vertically scrolling because guess what? Like there's no content that goes beyond it. 
all I have to do is simply just use this auto layout and frame and just simply duplicate an item in there. And now it'll go down again and down again. And I'm gonna kind of illustrate one of the problems that I have with working in these tiny little frames. Okay, so let's go back to this. Does it work now? It does. But the problem is, is that our nav just scrolls with it. No big deal. All you have to do is within that frame or any frame for that matter, you can just go into the design tab and click fix position when scrolling. Now let's go preview it. Remember, I'm not building, I'm not hitting this play button a bunch. I'm just going right back and forth and back and forth. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. I wanted a fixed nav there. That's great. All right. So now what I wanted to show you, which I think is a really cool thing, is if you've set this up in the prototype and you've set it up, actually, sorry, let me see where I'm at. Oh, I'm sorry. When you click on the canvas, the prototype for the canvas, if you set it up to be like a device like this, I don't actually have to have this frame be the same size as the device. And the reason I'd like to do something like that is, let's say I'm in this scenario and I'd like to start editing these and I've duplicated my books down. So normally, if I just hit Command Y, I can go into outline, outline mode and I can see that these books are going off the screen. So I know that there's more content down there. But this is kind of frustrating to me because what do I have to do to work with these? Do I have to move them up and then back down again? What if I just want them to stay there? Clever Design says, it'd be cool to add a gradient to the top and the bottom edges to smoothen out the books, leaving, leaving, oh, and I get it. They would like fade in and out. I like that. Let's see if we can do something like that. So here's a great little hack. Uh, not even a hack. I tend to call everything a hack, it seems. Oh, I have a little, I have an offending, uh, I have an offending object here, and I am not sure where it's coming from. It's obviously on a locked layer. And I don't know if it's here. Wow. Look at what I've done. I have an offending time. Well, in the name of the stream, what I'm going to do. Yes, it's okay. I'm human just like you. I know. I know you didn't think so. Uh, I'm just going to get away from that thing. And I'll figure out like if I lock some layer way down there. I don't know where it's at. So I want to be able to work with all these because what I'd like to do is change these things, right? I want to see how this content reacts to different types or this layout reacts to different types of content, longer length stuff. So I'm going to type in here the design of everyday things. Cool. Well, the auto layout adjusts. That's awesome. Uh, now I want to be able to do that with a few more. Here is the tip. If I take this frame and I simply just move this frame down, and let's just move this all the way down. You might be thinking, what is it going to do? Render some really tall iPhone? Well, let's check it out. Because our constraints are set to have this title bar as fixed and this navigation here as fixed, it just takes all that content and scrolls it and it fits it in there. So it adapts into, uh, it adapts that frame to this for me, even though the frame here is actually much taller. In this way, you can actually work on larger canvases uh, with your grid set on those canvases. So if I was on this, it's not technically a canvas, it's a frame. But if I turn this grid on with Control G, I could have those grids on there. And I don't have to have these things like clipping off. All right, let's get into this. The next thing I'd like to do is just change out the content because I want it to feel realistic. So I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what I did here. I actually took this component and just stacked a bunch of book fills on here that were already sized to the right thing. This is kind of my, uh, I don't know, this is a single component that I don't have to swap out for a bunch of books. I do this with avatars too. I just got a bunch of images in there and I try to make those images pretty buried. So let's go ahead and turn on this image. Great, Creativity Inc. Let's go ahead and start putting in our content. All right, and let's go here. I'm simply holding Command or on Windows, Control, and I'm clicking in, that way I get to the, the object that's in front of my mouse that's at the deepest layer. Otherwise, you may find that you're just double-clicking, 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 and your life is not wonderful anymore. You would really like to be able to just get right to that object. So here we are. We're going to do why fonts matter. Why not? That's a beautiful-looking book. All right. And let's come to this one. 
Okay, perfect. What is this one? Thinking in systems. We've already actually done that. Aha! I like this one. All right, logo modernism. Now we don't really need to, I don't want to fill out all this content. There is a couple of really cool plugins that you can use to be able to like uh, fake a bunch of fake content, put in a bunch of different length content, because really what you're trying to do is battle test this design to see how like well it responds, how your auto layout is set up. Uh, for now, I'm not going to get into all those plugins because they do just take a little bit of time, but you can see here, uh, when I put more content in, lo and behold, to my surprise, auto layout is beautiful and it's working wonderfully. But what I really don't like is I don't like that this book is actually like in the middle. It feels weird in the middle. Uh, it feels like we're getting this weird gap here and I'm starting to have like these little negative space things. Uh, and that to me, like it's like a negative space trap where like, I don't know how the grid works and it feels misaligned. My eye, my eyes are kind of drawing this line over here, but like then it kind of goes down and it feels like poorly designed. So if I come into this component, what I can do to start is just make this component, the master, much bigger with much more content to showcase this issue. Now what I can do with this book is I can actually push it all the way to the top. Uh, and that way it's always top aligned. Now I don't really like this because my padding now seems a little bit off. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm gonna come to this sub object here and look at what happened. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and get rid of my eight on my vertical padding, but I still do want some padding overall. I just wanted this item here to line up with this more here. So I could also adjust the line height on this and the spacing and everything. But what I'm gonna do here on this main book list item is that it's a horizontal auto layout container for this component. And I'm gonna restore that eight up there. That way my text is still aligned. Now, as I scroll down, you can see and behold that it is beautiful. So let's go check this out now and see how this looks. Woohoo! I dig this. The type is probably a bit small for an iPhone. I don't think type is actually that small. So we can of course always go back here and check out what we've got set here. We've got it set to a body style, which is great because now we can actually like make an, a change to this body and it should affect everything. So even over here, this is not a component, but I've got it linked to the body style. So if I come into here and I click body and right here, I click edit style, you can see, yes, that it's actually really small. I've got it set to intermediate, but I've got it set at 10. I should probably have this thing at least at 14. Um, line height seems about right for that. And I'm going to go to a regular font weight. Now, I don't think this would actually have this much content in it. Just did it to figure that out and figure out how the auto layout would respond. So now, of course, you can see this is a little bit more realistic. And this, of course, would just be a little bit of a brief synopsis of the book. Now, this was all experimental copy, so we'll go ahead and get that out as well. Now, what's cool about this is what if I just wanted to get rid of it? So I just got rid of the text like that and deleted it out. But what if I just wanted to go back to the same uh, situation uh, that we had in the same settings that we had in the master component? I can simply click this item, that right click this item and do reset instance. And it'll actually reset only that part of the instance. Uh, notice that my book cover still stayed the same. We've got uh, Matthew Alessandri asking, anybody know how to have the iPhone device display when running the prototype? No problem, Matthew, simple. One thing that's good to know about Figma is that when you click on the canvas and not another object, your notice how when I click on this object, the properties are available for that object in the right hand side here. But if I click on the canvas, what you'll see now is something different. These are the properties for all the things in all of this document in this canvas. So if you go to the prototype after clicking the canvas, boom, iPhone 11 Pro, gold, let's go space gray, all right. And of course, you can also change the background of the prototype. So say you've got a brand color or something cool that you wanted to put in here, you could absolutely do that. Maybe I don't like the black on black, it's a bit foreboding, I'll go gray. Of course, if I just close this and I go back here, 
you'll notice that the iPhone now renders on this. I can also go change out my, uh, my iPhone models to different models there as well. So you can see here that everything is beautiful and wonderful. All right, next little tip and trick that we're gonna do is we're going to start rigging up the navigation here. Now we're not creating this to be a full featured app because this is only a three hour stream. Just kind of want to get you the basics of each. And I also want to be able to uh, take this stuff, publish it to the Figma community for you after the stream so that you can go right into this file and you can actually duplicate it, edit it for yourself. Right. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is I'd like to create one more feed. Now we already know how to create these things here from the last stream, but I wanted to create one more type of object. And this object is basically a user post. Uh, in this case, Simone Wesley, 20 minutes ago, uh, gave a 4.5 star rating to just my type and left a comment on it. That was a whole part of this idea is that we we're gonna be able to have somebody uh, that you follow, friends, whatever, share, hey, check this out, like, this is a cool book, it's great, here's a cool quote from the book, something like that. So let's go check out what's going on with this component. First of all, it's not even a component right now, it's actually just a frame, so we'll make a component out of it. Uh, notice here that we have feed title, we've already set this up, great. This is also using probably the feed title, oh, let's go ahead and bind it to that, feed title. Perfect. And in fact, we will take this and put it in the master component. I believe that what we can actually do, notice that we changed the font size there when I went from 24 to uh, whatever the feed title is here, and I believe that's 20. Um, and that's great. I want to keep those things in sync. But I also just updated this component. So I believe what I can do is go like this, and I can go push overrides to master. Awesome. So now I made an edit in line that I pushed to the master. I didn't want to have to go all the way over there and lose my time going to that master component. I wanted, I realized that when I'm actually in the context of this mock-up, it actually, like, that was too big. That was too big. All right, let's look at Simone Wesley's uh, name. Notice that it's not bound to a textile. So we'll go ahead and do that. We're gonna bind that to the body textile. Now we also need like a link style or something like that because we need a bold on that. I can simply just go in here and put bold in and it'll override that. I can also take this, detach it, and then create a new style. And we'll call this, we could call it username. I might just call it, um, we'll just call it bold for now. Notice I never actually made it into a bold item, but hey, there we are. Uh, okay, and then let's check this one here. The great thing about styles is that I can be linked to a body style, so any changes I make to body styles will actually be, uh, will actually be like that lightweight style, but I can also have a color on that too. Hey, Kaylee Design, how's it going? Uh, Clever Design says, can I send you a question via email? Hey, y'all, I'm a designer advocate here at Figma. I love this product. I would love to answer your questions. Please send me a question via email or anything, Twitter, whatever you'd like. Uh, my email, just so you know, is rking at figma.com. Uh, I'd like to go ahead and just take a quick pause to see if there's any questions at all uh, as I move through. We've got any people that have asked questions, want to make sure that I'm answering as we go. That's what we do on the stream. That's why it's so fun. It's live. All right, I think we're doing pretty good. All right, so let's really quickly just figure out the, the anatomy. I feel like, I feel very proper when I say it that way. The anatomy of this component. Uh, this here is a auto layout frame. You can see that it's set to horizontal, and that's because it's children here, the book, and this type here are both, um, they're horizontally laid out. Uh, the, the key and the secret with all this, if you're nesting, uh, if you're nesting frames or anything that's auto layout, nested, 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 what you want to do is make sure that each parent is also auto layout too, so it'll adjust. 
Uh, this frame here is actually, uh, let's go to this frame nine, so aptly named by me, uh, is vertically auto layout. And that, the reason that we would do something like that is because what we want that frame to do is grow vertically. And of course, all the items are stacked vertically as well. Uh, and then of course, what I've got here is I've got another component that's, I keep saying component, sorry about that. It will be a component soon. Uh, this frame is set up to be horizontal auto layout. And of course, we've got this eight pixels in between. Otherwise, it would be smashed up right against there. Cool, that's great. Uh, what we do need to do though, I see a little bit of an issue. These are so close. So let's take this frame here and let's say, hey, any internal items, let's put some padding in there. We'll just go eight because I'm in love with the number eight. Now we're gonna move this out here. We're gonna create that into, into a component and I'm gonna just call this a user review item or user review. Finelli Furtado says, uh, Roger, we need states. Tell your colleagues at Figma. Figma absolutely knows they need states. I can guarantee that. I can't promise. I can't share what they're making, uh, but I can share that they love you all and that they're working. Um, I believe that I've also got another question, so I'm just going to pause here for a second. There we go. Okay, so Bruno's got the question of what's the font? The font is actually, let's go on in here, it's got a really cool name. It's called Square Big, um, and Square Big is actually on... Oh, Future Fonts. If anybody hasn't checked out Future Fonts, it's a bunch of indie font developers. I love it. It's so cool. Uh, check it out. It's called Square Big. I'm using their some of their typefaces. They actually allow you to download a demo so that you can actually put it in and work with it. Um, I think it's got limited uh, potential ligatures and things like that, limited characters, but it works for establishing the whole aesthetic at first. Uh, let me see if I've got any more questions. Seems we got a few, uh, a few coming in. Uh, Mayer says, wait, so don't you have actually have the frame taller than the phone size? I didn't know that would work. I didn't actually know that either. And then Tom, the goat, as we call him here, or uh, the DA daddy, as we call him as well. Uh, that's, actually, nobody calls him that. Uh, that's actually what I call him. That's it. Um, he shared that with me the other day, and uh, I was just like, what a wealth of knowledge. What a wealth of knowledge. Ah, okay. So, uh... It seems like we do have a show in our design team, our product design team here, who has said that we are, has said on a podcast that we are working on states. So we hear you. Hold up. We'll get them to you. We'll get them to you. <laughs> All right. I think we're mostly good on the, uh, the question front. Uh, I've got my chat open here. So if anybody, uh, if anybody's got more questions, just let me know. I'll do my very best to answer. All right. Yeah, Clever Design. Uh, he says, Clever Design says, it's interesting how I'm nesting my auto layouts. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's uh, it's quite the feat. Quite the feat. All right, let's move along. Uh, all right, so I want to have this separator line, and I want to go ahead and clone out a user review into this feed here. I want to make sure that this is also the, the right width. I think 320 was the width that I was working with. Let's go ahead and turn on our grids and let's make sure that this component is actually working. Yeah, 320 was what I wanted. And I want my separator line here to be 320 as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and type in 320. And there we are, that's perfect. I'm gonna turn off my grid so it's not distracting for me. Uh, Control G, of course, is what that is. And I'm gonna go ahead and just clone these items down here. Uh, a really cool trick for copy pasting is if you alt drag down like this and then you simply duplicate the next one, it remembers the last position that you alt drag down. And it'll just keep on boop, 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 boop. It'll just, that's the real sound that apparently Figma makes. Uh, so I'm gonna just use this to be able to create my auto layout container so I can see how it works. So I'm gonna simply hit shift A, that's auto layout. Figma actually smartly detects that, oh, these things are on top of each other, so let's go ahead and stack them on top of each other. Now, you see that here, auto layout, vertical, perfect, it's a frame, love it. Let's put some spacing in between our items. Now, that means it'll also put spacing in between these items as well. 
uh, these little divider lines, which I actually want. That's the perfect thing for me. That's what I want. Uh, if you ever want to get an idea of how this is actually, uh, how it looks and what each, the real estate of each uh, subcomponent is doing, you could always put a fill on those and maybe just check that out real quick. Okay, cool. That's what it is. Now, what was our uh, spacing between these, these ones? Uh, 16, perfect. Let's go ahead and try our divider line over out in the books because this is a new style that I'm making. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag this divider line out. I've got it set to a fill style of faint. That's one of my uh, shared color styles. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that into component. I'm just gonna call it a divider. I might wanna make sure that in my divider that these constraints are set up right. So left and right, top and bottom. Yay, great. And I'm just gonna copy that so uh, I love to work with components, so I'd rather do that. And then I'm just gonna use my arrow keys to drop that in the right area, and I'm really not liking that color on there anymore. All right, now on this frame, I'm gonna go ahead and add in my divider lines. It just puts it at the bottom, but if I just duplicate it, and I'm doing duplicating, and I'm just moving these down, this is great. All right. Uh, Andy, interesting question. Any plan for the repeat grid like Adobe XD to make duplicating like that easier? Um, I have not heard anything about repeat grid uh, on the radar from the internal Figma team. I'm not sure that doesn't mean that they haven't thought about it or they're not working on it. I will say I actually just uh, shared a, a lunch with somebody recently and we talked about XD features and I do think that XD's repeat grid is fantastic. I love it. Um, really, really cool. All right. Effectively, what we're trying to do here is just get enough of these book reviews uh, to be able to uh, fill out that scroll once again. So I'm going to go ahead and just move this one down to here. Now, if you ever really want to like duplicate faster, uh, here's a really cool trick that I learned the other day as well. Say you're selected on this frame, and really what you want to do is select every object in the frame. Now, this is old Raji, and by old, I mean like like, uh, like a, month, a month ago. So I'm going to come in here and hold shift and select each one of them. What a pain in the ass. All right, so on this one, if I hold the frame and I just hit enter, it selects all children. Now, if I hit command D, I'm duplicating, and look at me duplicating. I don't want to say that I uh, duplicate the best, but I kind of feel like I duplicate the best. I obviously uh, had that pattern set up wrong too, but hey, who's judging me? Who's judging me? All right, so we've got all these things filled out. This is perfect. Um, now I want to just change a few of these objects out as well. So remember my avatar component? Remember how I've set these things up? Awesome. I can just come in here, turn off a few images, turn an image on. This is great. All right, I'm just gonna come in here. Now I'm not gonna worry about setting all these up for you. I just kind of wanted to show you the way that I deal with and the way that I work with this stuff. Um, I like doing this. The one thing that this idea lacks is that uh, you don't get to know names here. So say you wanted to have like Andy, Clever, Kelly, uh, Finelli, uh, it's not going to work out. Uh, it just says image, 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 image. So you could always do that in a different way. Uh, I'm not going to actually fill out much more different than this, other than maybe the book covers, just to give me some variance so that we can get on into prototyping like champs. Once again, just doing, just doing what we know. Just, just doing this good stuff here. All right, and we'll just get rid of, yeah, we don't want just my type. We'll do this one here. Cool. All right. Yeah, Bruno. Bruno is also a very active Figma user. Uh, mentioned a cool new trick for these. Just use Content Real plugin and upload all your avatar library, your avatar library there. Another way that you can do this is using Google Sheet Sync. We're not gonna cover that in this stream, but with Google Sheet Sync, you can essentially set up images and everything. So be like, book image, book image, book image in a cell, and then you could have like, review, title, rating, blah, 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 blah. Um, 
And using all of that, you could actually, and you can actually fill out this rating text and everything using a sheet sync or something like that, or a JSON plugin. There's all kinds of plugins that you can use for this sort of thing. Uh, it would be so much easier, but I'm not gonna worry about that on the stream. Uh, we're going to check out a few things. So uh, let's first set up the navigation. So here's our nav bar. I'm gonna move these back. I'm gonna kind of just neatly stack and organize my components. When I'm initially coming up with a UI, I always design with my components right on the same uh, canvas. And the reason I do that is because I'm always editing these things. I'm trying to see how they look with this. So I don't wanna have to push them to a library right now. I want them instantly editable. Okay, so what we're gonna do is go to the prototype tab here. All right. So this is gonna be a My Books frame, and we'll go ahead and put this here in the frame name so that we can see that easier. And this is gonna be the feed. So we'll just put here the feed. Okay, so on this read feed, ooh, it rhymes, um, I'm gonna go ahead in the master component. Now remember, the relationship between a master and an instance is such that the instances always take on the qualities of the master, but you can override them, and you can see us doing this here. So once I put this to here, I'm saying, when you click this, go here. On tap, navigate to the feed, all right? Now the books, when it's, uh, when it is tapped, I'd like it to go to my books. And of course, search, we don't have anything in there, but hey, we'll go ahead and do it anyway. Put it over there. We could probably just put some different books in here. Uh, for now, we're not gonna actually dev out the search feature because I feel like that's not gonna display too much for us. Uh, now, the cool thing that we just noticed is we never hooked up these things, but yet they're all hooked up right now. Well, let's check that out. Let's see if it even, let's just see if it worked. So read feeds here, my books, search, read feed. The one thing that I've noticed is that this item here didn't get that fixed positioning. Now that's because I designed it first by dropping them in here. If I simply just ripped out all of these and started from scratch on this, take an instance, put it into the design, put it at the bottom of the screen, set up your constraints, left and right, bottom and fixed. Right now within that frame, this instance has all those qualities. So if I simply cop, copy and then paste, and then paste here, this one actually didn't know the right size because of the frame size is different. Uh, and I can actually just change that if I'd like by taking this down here, then uh, we'll get it on the bottom as well. Now, if we go back to the prototype tab, you'll see that all these wires are hooked up. Don't worry, if for some reason you have a special case with your navs and you wanna be able to take this and have it do something different, maybe you tap on the read feed and the first time you do it, it pops up a little drawer and says, hey, this is your first time reading the read feed or something like that. What you could do is easily override that by dragging it out and doing something else with that. Now let's come back in here and see how this is working. Cool, so this is working, our reading feed, we didn't set up the constraints on that. Let's go do that, left and right and top. And we probably didn't set fixed position when scrolling. This is fixed when scrolling, this is fixed when scrolling, great. And did we do that for all of these? We did because we copy pasted them. Now you can see that the reading feed is there, great. My books is there, search. Awesome. Everything's working pretty well. Let's see what else we can do here. Hi, Chris from Malta. Good to have you. Yeah, Mayher, I really love that. Um, I love the idea of creating a prototype from that master component. The only weakness to this is that it's got to be local to this document and specifically to this page. So Imagine if this nav bar moved elsewhere. It's not as if you can connect a prototype noodle to anything on another page. So right now it would really need to exist in here. Now, in the scenario where you have a nav bar like this and it came from your design system, okay? So this is what I would advise if you're doing a local prototype. This nav bar is coming from a team library and a design system on a totally different page. Uh, 
let's just call it new nav or something. New nav. Uh, let's take this master and let's just move it on to like a random frame here. All right, let's just say we're gonna simulate this as in a team library. I'm taking a copy of this instance. I'm going over to my app, I'm pasting it in. Well, all those master noodles don't work anymore. Never fear, never fear. What you can do here is simply just take this nav, create a wrapper component around it, just turn it into a component. The instance of it is still there, so it'll still update with your design system, but now when you're in prototype mode, you can re-rig up those noodles and it'll work locally in your document. So that's a little bit of a workaround uh, that can work for you, can work for me, can work for all of us. Uh, Alex has said you can actually move this to another page uh, and it'll keep the connections. Let's see. Alex, it didn't work. It didn't work. Uh, it lost the connections. But the uh, the workaround that I had did still work as well. The one that I just showed you. Uh, the wrapper component around a nav works. So don't worry about that. We all good. We all good in here. Sometimes if you've ever noticed this as you uh, have auto layout frames around things, you'll notice that sometimes things like this happen where it actually gets cut off. Uh, this is because by default frame has clip content on. Just make sure that those are turned off and we're good there. All right, so let's, uh, let's see what we can do next. All right. I'm wondering where to go with this. Okay, let's try to work on a little bit of transition stuff. The first thing we don't have here is like a state for each one of these. So like when we're on the read feed, we would like to have some kind of a state here that represents a more active, maybe the read feed is bold, maybe the comment bubbles turn black or something like that. Uh, we could go ahead and give this a try uh, by breaking this and just simulating this. I think we'll just do this this way instead of doing it the way that I would normally do it, which would be I would actually just swap out a component instance. Uh, but I'm not going to do that here because I think for speed, I think y'all know how to do a component. I think we've talked about it a million times. I'm trying to see what I did here. I really, I really had a heyday with this thing, didn't I? Raji, <laughs> what did you do? All right, I think this was the idea in my thinking. All right, so on this one here, we've got a little, uh, we've got this layer and I've got a half toning here, you can see, and I've set that as a style Remember that you can actually use images as styles, or they could be a fill saved into a style. So I'm just gonna change this. This will be my selected state here. Let's see, having a little trouble navigating my complex vector structure. I blame only myself, and then sometimes I blame you. All right, and then we'll go bold on this. So let's go uh, bold. Now we're at 14. We could also just set this to the body or we could set it to the bold style. And I think that's great. Now we'll come over here into my books and we'll do the same thing. Once again, like I said, I would probably put these into their own components and then simply come into this component, swap it out for a different nav item. Notice here it says icon books. I'd probably just swap it out for like icon books selected. Uh, that way it's all saved and it's all tidy. But for now, uh, we only have a few of these and I really wanna see what it looks like anyway. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and take these two things, change the fill to that. Great. And we're gonna change that to bold. Jose asks, uh, why doesn't Figma have connections between pages? Is it something the team is working on? Uh, Jose, I actually don't know the answer to that. Uh, let me actually ask around a little bit. I'm not, I'm not certain. Uh, I do think that that would be an incredibly, uh, an incredibly helpful thing for sure. Yeah, let me look into it. All right, and lastly, we'll just do this with search. Uh, let's go ahead and put that on and woohoo. Uh, I've still got some live subtracts here, which is why it's a little difficult to hold command or control and click in. <laughs> mayor says, uh, press command and click the layer, the tip that you taught. Yeah, but look at this, Mayor. So I click it and it goes to the sub ellipse. Remember, 
that uh, Figma's really good at having these live Boolean operations where it doesn't destroy an object. So a vector cuts out a vector. You know, quick example of that is is this. You know, vector cuts out a, a vector, and you wanted to have like a a notch in the middle, maybe. So we come here and we subtract it. Now, normally, if you double clicked into that, you would actually be into the vector, but notice it's actually not that. Um, it's actually got objects within it still live. And this allows you to do really interesting things like you can turn that to a circle or put border radii on the inner object and then put maybe even a larger border radii on the outer. Uh, and this isn't even a group. This is just a Boolean operation. I personally love it. Um, yeah, it's cool. It's way cool. All right, well, one thing seems very obvious is that Bruno's gonna have to come on this stream and teach some things. Bruno, I'm asking you right now, need you in. Uh, he was also saying that you could do this. When you're in here, you're a little bit lost. He said that you can right click to see the layer list here and you could just bump up one. Uh, strangely enough, I knew that, but actually don't use it very often. I don't have that muscle memory yet. That is a really, really great tip. Bruno, thank you. That was amazing. We love it, the people love it. Okay, so another thing that we can do here, let's just look at our prototype interactions and let's come back to the prototype tab. Let me kind of get this closer for y'all to come on in and gander. All right, so right now we literally just tap, boom, instant interaction. So if we wanted to do something a little bit different, what we could do is do something like smart animate all the objects. Uh, we could do something like a simple like push and a push is something very similar to what we see on uh, what we see on iOS. You can see this interaction by just simply looking here. Uh, as B comes in, A is still there, and there's a portion of time where A and B are still visible on the screen. We can see that this is like 300. I don't know why, but 300 feels like uh, it just feels like an eternity to me. It's just too damn long. Uh, but let's see what what happens here. So we do this, what does that feel like? Let's go ahead and do this for all of our items just because I kind of want to see what that push feels like for everything. Once again, 200. In the future, I would love it if this was a little token field so I could just go in and go boom, guess what? I want my default interaction time. That would be great, it could be a variable. One thing that's nice too is if you ever want to mess around with times like this, you can actually scrub the field. Uh, here's another tip. If you scrub it, it'll scrub this way, but if you scrub this way, it'll scrub in greater increments. If you scrub all the way across the screen, it will actually wrap as it goes. So uh, you can get buck wild with the, <laughs> the scrubbing. Uh, all right, so now we're here. This is great. Let's see all this fields. Nice, this is great. But one thing that I really don't like is that I don't like that my nav is moving underneath this. I don't like that the header bar is moving. So here's how we're gonna take care of that. So we're gonna smart animate matching layers on this. Uh, this was a little confusing to me at first, but if you'll notice here on the header, let's look at that, it's called header. And notice over here, it's also called header. Also notice when I'm in prototype mode, if I click that header, it does a faint, it does a purple rectangle around this, but each one on the left here, it does a faint one. Those are all the same named objects. That's what the queue is. It lets me know that, hey, these objects are all the same name. Now down here, notice even if I hover it, it comes alive. So let me zoom in a little more for you. All of these objects over here are actually lighting up with purple too. Those are all the same name. So what Smart Animate says is this. We're gonna use a push transition. Let's go back to these to uh, get y'all looking at what I'm looking at. We're gonna have a push transition to slide the content of these things out of one and in from the new one. And then any other any other layer that is exactly the same, smart animated. Now the weird thing about this is that these layers don't move. And so it'll smart animate those. It'll say, oh, you don't move? All right, we'll move you from zero to zero, we're done. So, I see that Bruno, uh, Bruno, you're already one step out of me. I noticed that when I said, notice that the header is moving and the uh, the footer is moving, that Bruno's like, 
Turn on, turn on auto animate. I love when you guys know more than me. Uh, that's great. But notice this here. So what happens here, uh, and we'll do it actually at a much greater uh, degree of time here. So we'll go ahead back to these, these little ones here. We'll take U3, prototype. Uh, the easing is mixed is probably because one is off. Um, we're gonna go ahead, oh, huh. well, whatever. We're gonna do uh, push. We're gonna do smart animate all of them. And we're gonna do, we're gonna do three seconds or 3000 milliseconds. I want you to see what's happening here. So when I click here, notice what's happening. Let's look only at the header bar. When I click to the different screens, when Figma has two layers that have, say they're a matching name, but they don't know uh, how to like transition between texts, it'll simply just do a cross fade. Oh yeah, Bruno, uh, if any of you wanna to talk to anyone, make sure in Zoom that you're doing all panelists and attendees. So notice here too that we're cross fading these icons as well. So it doesn't, Figma doesn't really know what to do with those. It doesn't know that it needs to move them or anything because they don't move. So there are two objects. One's a background, uh, one's a background pattern and it's going to a darker color. So it simply just cross fades those things. Andy says, could you control the action of the titles to fade in or push in or swipe, etc." So Andy, the answer is uh, yes, you can. Uh, but not in this level here with this smart animate like this. Uh, that's maybe for another stream when we're going to go more into depth on prototypes. Uh, but there are things that you can do to smart animate things in. Um, you could pull it off the screen or something like that. And then uh, it'll actually move it in like this. We could actually detach that title from the actual, uh, from the actual header bar from that little status bar up there if we wanted to as well. I'd love to see if there's something tricky I could pull off uh, by doing like a fix. Let's see if this is a frame. It's absolutely a frame. Yeah, nope, we can't do it. So right now it's just a simple fade on those. Um, but we could certainly demonstrate the interaction if we didn't want to keep these components. And that's easy enough to do in Figma for sure. Also, just letting you know that the team is absolutely working on one-upping uh, one-upping our, our smart animate over attributes. Uh, right now, there's only a certain amount of attributes that you can actually smart animate over. Obviously, one of those things was a, uh, a fading uh, colors. Another one thing, one of those things would be like a, an XY value translation, something like that. So, uh, one thing that we're getting for, as a comment is that you could actually hide this layer like this and then paste. So take this, take the, so you still have that status bar there. You could actually paste this thing in, get rid of this on this component. So you actually have two of the same component. And then of course you could do something like taking this and translating it in there. Uh, that may, that may work if that's something that you're looking to do. Cool. Um, but yeah, essentially two ways around the same problem. My idea was like breaking the, the component and this is just taking two instances and then subtracting out the items in there so you can maintain a component relationship. That can work too. All right, so we're getting a little bit closer to the end of the stream, but I'd like to go ahead and uh, answer any questions that you all may have about this. Let's go ahead and set up this as well. Um, I want to get that away from that... Uh, 3,000 milliseconds, uh, and let's just demo all of these transitions here. Boom, boom, what is it like when we come all the way over here? Reading feed, great, great, great. And I think that we actually lost one of our headers in, uh, poor header, I think we lost it. We got here, header, header, header. Did we keep it fixed? Did we keep it fixed? Yeah, we're all good there, okay. All right, let's uh, stay tuned for a little, a uh, few more questions. If y'all have anything uh, you'd like to talk about, uh, let's absolutely do that.
Uh, Mayor has a question of, he'd like to be able to share prototypes with your clients and how can you see it full screen without mirror? Mayor, I've actually heard uh, from a few people that are local agencies that they're able to actually take this thing and take it off of this. Um, if you load this prototype up in an iPhone, so actually load up the share link in an iPhone, that it loses the Chrome. Now, I didn't ask a lot of questions around that. I'm not sure if they un, if they, if they unattached these things here, but they said the user experience was pretty solid. Um, I'll have to check into that. I don't want to answer that very confidently right now. Um, so let's just talk really quick about overlays because what one thing that we did not get to do, uh, and I'm going to go ahead and work on this. I'll go ahead and go over stream, uh, you know, by a few minutes here. Um, I wanted to bring up a sheet for this uh, book detail. I was really digging on this um, idea that the sheet would come up. And of course, I'm gonna need a regular iPhone X size screen to compare how far that sheet should come up. Uh, but let's go ahead and just set that up really quick. So I'm gonna go ahead and go to my frame tool, uh, or I can actually just take, yep, yeah, let's go to the frame tool, that'll work. I'm gonna go to phone, and I'm gonna go to the Pro X here. I just wanna compare how far I'd like this to be able to come up. This is all up to me. Let's see here, I've got a group. I'd like to be able to change this size. So I'm gonna go ahead and just change it to a frame too because I'd like to have my constraints set up here, all right? I'd like to have this white rectangle. Uh, I don't actually need this white rectangle in the, in the background at all. I can actually just put these shapes and effects on the frame. So if I simply Command Option or Control Option C, in control option V, I'll put them on. Notice though, I just ran into this this morning as well. Notice that it didn't bring my border radius uh, in here. And I don't like that. The problem is, is that it's not copying the properties be from these. And I'm gonna go ahead and speak to the team about this as well, but it's not copying because this is on a vector object. And then this is a frame, although they do share the same abilities. So what I'd like to do is come in and put independent border radii and I'm gonna go ahead and put this at, let's say 24, 24, and it's gonna go left, right, top, bottom. Great. I'm gonna go ahead and have this little handle not be at a scale. I'm gonna set its constraint to the, the top and the center. This way, when this frame resizes, that little handle always just stays exactly the same size. Perfect. All right, let's go ahead and put this book in. I don't know how big we'd like to let this book get, but let's go ahead and let it get much bigger. So we're gonna go ahead and use the scale tool again. We might need to use that plugin as well, but let's go ahead and leave it at this for now. And then we'll go ahead and bring in some text. We'll bring in a title and things like that. Uh, I'm gonna borrow this title size. I'm just gonna come over and copy it out of the component. And I'm gonna paste that in and we'll just do this. Ruined by design. Now I'm not sure what this layout's gonna be. One potential layout that we could do is just to bring it up in a sheet here. I think that might actually be much nicer to have it smaller, but I wanted people to be able to see like this big blown up, uh, this big blown up cover. So let's go ahead and I'm gonna space this down. Uh, this is actually 16, it's 15. I'm gonna make it 16 off the top. And then I'm gonna come here and I'm gonna go one, two, my nudge units are eight each, so that's 16. Of course, I can always, when I'm clicked on an object, hold Option or Alt, and I can just bring my cursor to other objects. Like, this is 16 pixels away from this. That's perfect. I'm gonna go ahead and center this in the frame. I'm also gonna set this up to have a left and right constraints and top. And then, of course, I think I'm gonna center this text. Uh, uh, Mayor says he's in love, or he or she is in love with the nudge amount feature. Uh, yeah, he, here we go. Uh, nudge amount feature. I love that too because I always nudge and all my grid units are all in eights. So if I turned on my grid here, boom, I would see that I have my grid and it is a eight pixel grid. You can actually even see that I don't have uh, this thing set up correctly, which is no good. There we go. So I'm just sizing that on the grid. All right. Four, damn it. <laughs> where's, where's my nine pixel baseline? Uh, I don't even know why I have a nine pixel baseline. Uh, that is weird. 
All right. Anyway, uh, yeah, it's me over here with a nine pixel baseline. Um, all right. So anyway, what I'm going to do is bring in some body text here. Let's say this is going to be like this. I am not really sure. Uh, this would be a larger, maybe a larger body type. Maybe not. I'm not sure. Uh, I don't really need to go too much into the layout of this. I'm going to go ahead and finish this file off. Uh, so the stream can stay at the right length. And then I'm going to publish this file to the community. You'll see it on my account. Rip it apart. Take it. Steal it. Take all the things. I don't care. Um, it's yours to have fun with. But what I wanted to showcase at a last, uh, at a last effort here, first of all, let's just delete these. We're going to set these to um, left. We'll set them to left and right for now. And we'll set them to top. We're not using any auto layout for now. Um, and notice that even if I resize this, it knows what to do. So I would definitely set this up with auto layout in the, in the future. Um, I'm going to set this up as a component and I'm going to call this book detail or book sheet or whatever like that. Uh, what I want to do is just show you how you might uh, set up this interaction here. So let's find rune by design. Cool. This is the book. This is what we want to type. Tap on just this whole area I think is fine. So in prototype, we're going to go ahead and drag out a noodle to this. And on this one, and we can actually drag noodles out to instances or whatever. We'll just drag it out to that. Uh, this noodle here, uh, we're going to say on tap. In this case, we're not going to say navigate to. Now, we're going to have a lot of fun with these in the future. We're going to say on tap open overlay. And overlay is a thing that goes on top of your mockup. Notice that I don't have a frame for this. Notice that it's not its own prototype frame. It's none of those things. It's just a component over here. Uh, I'm saying open this thing and put it on top of that. Let's just see. Like, I love doing this. I like saying, like, will it prototype? Let's see. Ah, it's ugly. And it's just right in the middle. And that's because it's actually set to overlay center. Now, what I can do is I can say bottom center. And it can also set up an animation. So you can see here there's also some, some quick ones for once that we might use. This is center, probably your cases like dialogues, dialogue boxes or anything like that. Over here, this is top left. I think this is a pretty common scenario because of navigation drawers that slide in. And of course, this one because of alerts, and whatever, toasts, all those things. Now, what we're going to say is we're going to say close when clicking outside. We're also going to say add a background behind the overlay. We're going to say uh, we want this background to be, let's say black at 25%. That's fine. And then let's say move in. Uh, and now we can choose our direction. So we want this overlay to come in and up. Sure, 200 milliseconds. Beautiful. Let's check it out. So when I click on the outside, boom. Well, it didn't work. Oh, it's just because the prototype needed to get out of that overlay to, to start over. So this is what's great about this, right? Like we've got a scrollable UI. We can actually rig it up to different books and bring up those different books. Uh, we can actually set an on drag handler to actually come out of this view, which is going to be great. But considering that we are coming to an end, uh, I wanted to end on that note. Now, there's so many cool things that you can do with overlays, like a lot of cool things. You can do hover states. You can do hover and then click to another page. Um, there's, you can do cool things with dragging and this and that. There's lots of things that you could do. Uh, but I wanted to just say thank you for coming in. I also wanted to let you know that I'm streaming again tomorrow and we're going to be doing office hours and we're going to be talking more about components. So my designer advocate, Bud, Joey Banks, and I are going to be doing that thing tomorrow. Uh, and we're going to be able to, uh, we're going to be able to uh, show you uh, the actual title of this thing is actually called Mastering Components. And so we're going to be able to talk about like all of our little tips and tricks around just setting up components and setting up in a smart way. A lot of those techniques that we discuss will be uh, auto layout. A lot of them will be linking up to styles. A lot of those will be using constraints and using negative, uh, negative space frames and things like that. I'm absolutely going to get you a Zoom link for tomorrow because I'm a good person and I believe in getting you a Zoom link. Uh, let's see here. All right, so here is a registry link for that Zoom for tomorrow. Now, right now we're still doing these streams on uh, Twitch 
and on YouTube. So you're welcome to join there. But I do recommend that you register for this. You'll get an email that'll come to you just in case you're not like me, scatterbrained all the time, and maybe you like forget to add it to your calendar or something like that. We were realizing that these Zoom webinars were so much easier to raise your hand, but also to do to have an email connected to it so that you can actually get a notification right before. If you can't make it, sure, just ignore it. It's fine. Um, but anyways, uh, would love, would love, would love to uh, to see y'all tomorrow when we're talking about mastering components. Thank you everyone for coming in. Please uh, keep a look on figma.com slash, I'll go ahead and drop this link. Uh, keep a lookout for this file on figma.com slash at Raji. And this is gonna be my community link. And just keep a look on that page. Feel free to follow me there. And uh, you'll see this file come out being published and then you can rip it to shreds uh, or make it better. That would actually probably be better. Uh, if we have any last minute questions, I'm happy to take them now. Otherwise, I'll go ahead and shut it on down. <laughs> uh, I'm just loving Mayer's sense of humor. Uh, you're an incredible person, a very generous one. Oh, she just tickles all the right. Yep, yep, that's right. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much, everyone, for coming. Uh, thanks for, I, I've been missing this. Uh, thanks for coming and being a part of this. We're actually going to start switching these up a little bit uh, and having some really interesting new kinds of content. I feel like we've covered a lot of mobile UI scrolling and things like that. And so we're going to start talking, uh, you know, in like one session, like, deep dives on components or vectors, but then we're also gonna pull out and do stuff like, how do we design for responsive websites? Like website, I've heard that a lot from you all. Hey, that's great, we know how to design for mobile UI now, but like, how about websites? Um, and how do you make components that actually work and can work for both? Uh, and I'm gonna try to tackle that, no promises, but thank you everyone so much for coming to Build It in Figma. Uh, until tomorrow, I'll see you later.